Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess. Today I'm playing the move E4 as per usual, and we see E5, so knight F3. I'm gonna try and do something exciting, sacrificial perhaps. We're gonna play a scotch. Hopefully we see the main line here. Are we gonna see bishop C5? We do not, we see D6. What kind of ugly move is D6? I mean, I know it's theory, but it's basically now a Philidor defense. Anyway, we're gonna play knight C3, carry on with our, with our development, and um... okay, here's an idea. Basically, I want to play the move bishop to e3, stabilizing the knight, developing the bishop, uh, ready to play maybe queen d2 in castle queenside is an idea. But I play bishop e3 now, and we probably see the move knight to g4, um, which is obviously held by the bishop, and therefore cannot be, sorry about that, cannot be taken by the queen. And so bishop e3, knight g4, uh, if I try to kick the knight, we're going to see takes, and I do not want to give up this dark square bishop. So, quite a, a thematic move, I guess, in playing against this kind of uh this kind of sub because i believe f3 here and what f3 does is of course clamp down on the g4 square and it creates that little pocket um for those of you that play the london system first of all stop playing that opening i hate it um but secondly you know you'll probably recognize the kind of idea of putting this bishop in like a little a little pyramid here um the knight jumps to h5 which strikes me as absolutely disgusting really blatantly horrible and so we're going to develop as usual and say where are you going from here i mean <laughs> where where are you going forward from here i don't understand i like really don't understand i guess they want to play bishop to f6 but then i feel like i can maybe like take the knight uh you know pawn takes and like g4 maybe okay you know what we're, i mean we're going queen d2 this knight here is going to provide just free tempo to play the move check here. That's interesting. Here, are you going to sack a piece? Okay, I'm playing g3. I feel like they're going to sack the knight. And after pawn takes, bishop takes. Why can't I just play bishop f2? I don't understand this at all. Like, at all. Like, if here they go queen h4, I have bishop f2. This is the thing. I mean, f3 sometimes a weakening move. No way. Like, what? I, okay, I'm actually speechless. I don't really understand just anything my opponent's doing right now. We're going to take with the bishop. Applying some pressure down this diagonal, of course. That's crazy. So they're trying to induce g3. Okay, well, we're going to use these pawns to attack the king when it castles kingside, which is hopefully what we're going to see. Um, I don't want to trade dark square bishops because I trade here. I get the knight back into the game for free That's not what I want to do. What I want to do I guess I could let my opponent trade but then they can play knight f6. So I'm gonna make the argument that the bishop is Beautifully placed on e3 under this little this little pyramid here that I've got going on with f3 e4 um, And that the knight now has no squares to go to like literally no squares um, and this bishop is also looking foolish. I mean, what's he going to do? Take my knight? No, because then I just take with queen. And g6 does make some sense, maybe to play bishop g7. Fianchetto the bishop, that's quite a common setup. And then go like knight f6 and castle. Uh, then my opponent's position might not look so foolish. Also, if I go g4 straight away, they can go knight to g7. Uh, Fianchetto the knight, which is not actually a thing, but should be. Um, but I'm just going to castle queenside. Completely ignore this. I'm going to let my opponent do what they want over here. And um, once they've made some more committal moves, there we go. That is the committal move I'm looking for. Castling, uh, that is when I'm ready to play moves like h4, h5. So, I was about to say without further ado, but we might have some more ado to consider. Like, for instance, g4, forcing knight g7, and then, you know, h4. Or even, okay, you know what, we're, right, we're going g4, because it forces the knight to g7, it means the bishop can't retreat back down this diagonal. Uh, the knight's, I mean, it's not coming out anywhere exciting from g7, it might come to e6, to be fair, um, then that might hem in the, the light squared bishop. And my king is perfectly safe over here, I've got a lovely battery towards these dark squares, but bishop h6 doesn't make sense at the moment, because I'm not threatening to take, because then they take here, and they have less problems. But the move that does make sense, I believe, is I was going to say h4 because if they take I've got an open h file that's just looking beautiful for me uh, that is where I play a move like bishop h6 um 
take here, king takes and go queen h6 and then mate on h7, trying to open the h file there. But I'm also thinking I've got the move g5. Um, but I think g5, yes, it hits the bishop, but it's a bit of a one move threat. I want to keep controlling where this knight can go to. Um, I've also got the move knight d5. And like, where's this bishop actually going? Because if you come to here, I just kick the bishop again. I do like knight d5, but then it'd be bishop h4 and you actually suppress me from playing h4 myself. Right, we're going to go h4. I'm going to trust my initial instinct that h4 is a good idea. Um, if they take the pawn, which they absolutely can, I mean, it's attacked twice. Yeah, okay, now they, they prioritize knight e6, clearly feeling like they have to fear and capture this bishop. But now they haven't taken this pawn. Uh, they haven't opened my h file, which is a shame, except from the fact that I can just force my h file open with h5, unless they're willing to play g5, which would be astounding to me or oh, we play g5 now now you're talking now you are talking we play g5 here because then the bishop drops back i was about to say if here we can just go f4 the bishop drops back and again i can play f4 if i want and go for f5 which would be very fun but i can also just go h5 straight away and this pawn is held by Two pieces and only attack by two pieces, so we're absolutely fine. So yeah, I am just going to play h5 here. Um, and what we've done is we've we've pushed the h pawn and attacked what is known as a hook. So often when your opponent Fian Ketos a bishop, putting it on that long diagonal, uh, you know, playing for instance g6 bishop g7 or g3 bishop g2, uh, b3 bishop b2 or b6 bishop b7, just to exhaust all the possibilities there, putting those bishops on the long diagonals um, of the board and then they castle behind such a diagonal. If you can get your pawn to h5, um, there's this tension here that's kind of forced to occur when you play h5. Like, imagine the, the pawns were flat. When you played h5, they could just play, or rather, when you played g6, sorry, h6, uh, they could play g6. But because there's this thing known as a hook, you can force the tension, um, and thereby, I mean, I can force my h5 open here with h takes g6, which I think is quite a wise idea. We will do so. Now we have this rook that is staring at the king. Not ideal for my opponent. Um, I'm, I mean, this pawn's currently hanging, and I'm honestly just really want to play the move f4. But I'm also thinking queen h2 straight away, and like, how are you actually defending this? Because you can't play knight takes here. I guess you can play knight takes there. Queen h2, knight takes here. We take the knight, queen takes with check. And I have to move, and then there's, I guess, maybe like queen h5, which isn't ideal, but probably stops the mate. Although, if queen h2, knight takes here, we maybe play f4. And if the knight moves, then we're going to just go in here. Yeah, okay, we're going to go queen h2. I mean, this is just super, like, super instructive. We, we've, let's just look at the moves we've played. We've played h4 to then play g5 and play h5 to force open the h file and then slide across with the queen. Uh, the rook has taken here, that's a bold move, because I can now take here, which I will do so with very little to no calculation. Um, and it's not, like, completely obvious what I'm, you know, what my advantage is, actually, yet. But, I mean, the king is, the king is terribly weak. I maybe should have played f4 first, I might have been a bit impatient there. Because my bishop is hanging, and I haven't moved my light square bishop yet. But I am thinking the move bishop c4, you take my bishop for free... Rook comes here. I like this. You know what? We're, go we're going for this. Bishop c4. We're going to pin the knight to the king, which, first of all, just that starts exerting more pressure on my opponent's position. Do they have queen h8? They may have the move queen h8. In that case, I'm not going to be best pleased. I'm actually going to be insanely annoyed. Queen h8. Oh, you're telling me there's, there's, there's no way. I should have played f4. It's okay. We're still. I, I still believe we're winning. But queen h8 just does seem to dissolve stuff. Which is not what we want. Um, unless then we play rook f1. You take my queen. I take it with check. The king moves to here. And I take back the queen. You take my rook. I maybe go check. The king comes to here on g8. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, there's a lot of there's a lot of lines hit. Okay, that's I mean what is that? What is that move? I have no comprehension of that move. I feel like I just do this. Yeah, rook f1. I mean you take my bishop, I take your rook for free, and there are more disastrous consequences for sure down the f file. Um, one of the problems as well, currently, that my opponent's facing is that if I take here and move their king off this, then the bishop is not protected. Actually, wait, it is protected by the knight because the king breaks out the pin. But I'm sure there we play some insane queen sack and just win the game. That's my assumption. Um, it may not be calculated, but as Gary Kasparov said, you've got to develop your pieces and then, okay, that's rubbish. Okay, I'm about to make up a Gary Kasparov quote. Um, although I think he actually said this about develop your pieces and then trust them to work for you. Very paraphrased. I'm going to look up that quote, but my opponent can't stay attached to this pawn, which is interesting. Right, I'm up material. I feel like rook f1 makes a lot of sense. Oh my god, you know what else makes a lot of sense? Check. Oh my god. Forcing the move... King to e8? Oh my goodness, lads. Ladies and gentlemen, check. Oh wait, I think I just missed mate in one. Yeah, I just missed mate in one here. <laughs> That's alright, we missed checkmate in one, but we get checkmate in two. Can I do this in a more interesting way? Ah, oh, this is pretty fun. What if I sack my queen? Can I get away with that? Here, here. <laughs> Takes it. Takes it. Check, hit, check. Nah, okay, I think we're gonna take the checkmate in one. You know, when you have mate in one, look for better, but we will just checkmate my opponent there. Wow. Okay, we got away with that attack. Let's see how accurate that was. Okay, so here we are in the analysis. Now, given that this game uh, was very smooth and almost flawless, I'm gonna say perfect. It was 95% accuracy, as you can see. Zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes, zero blunders. I think that that qualifies uh, a flawless game at least at least to me at my level you know there's nothing remotely significant here to improve on um or very very little at least so if the title is flawless or perfect game forgive me that it's not 100 percent. 95 is close enough um but yeah we're not going to go through this in a load of detail i think the, the gameplay footage is already about 12 minutes so i don't make the video too long but we will speed through the game here and just quickly look at it turn the engine on e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 d4 ed4 knight d4 uh, this is the scotch, of course. Well, the scotch was here, actually, but this is the main line. Uh, d6 here, knight c3, knight f6, and then f3, preparing this idea of bishop e3. All very good. Knight h5 made no sense. Um, and it's kind of... I think this game is largely about exploiting the fact that this was a completely tempo-wasting move. Um, bishop e3, playing with a cohesive game plan. You know, f3 to play bishop e3... Um, Bishop e3 as well, meaning I can come back to f2 to sort of justify the push of f3, playing queen d2 and queenside castling, such that I can push all these pawns. You know, that, that was kind of the game plan from the start, and that game plan obviously came into fruition very well. Um, and it's not necessarily trivial um, or easy um, to actually punish a move like knight to h5. I mean, it, it it is a stupid move. It makes no sense, really. Um, but after the bishop comes here, I lift the queen, bishop check g3, takes takes and bishop to f6 here what you don't want to do is take this bishop here because then the knight takes and while you're still doing really well after like queenside castles for instance it's i don't know you've lost quite a bit of your like tangible advantage because this knight has come back to quite a natural square bishop can come to e6 um, and while you can still start attacking with these pawns your opponent probably can get queen d7 and queenside castles in uh, and you know the play's a little less obvious however if after bishop f6, as I did, you play bishop to e3 and you leave these pieces here, you know, disconfigured, looking at stupid, it's, I mean, it's not a massive difference in the engine evaluation, but in terms of just how black has to play this, it's horrible. So, you know, g6 here, queen side castle's best, king side castle, and they're trying to reconfigure these awkwardly placed pieces, to which I then go g4, push the knight back, uh, h4 best move, attacking it towards the king, and then just g5 saying this bishop is stupid here, uh, kicking it about and then going h5 and just getting all these moves basically for free um, while my opponent works out how to reconfigure their poorly placed pieces. I've now got 
two pawns ready to crack open this king. And after the bishop moves, we open the h file, uh, slide across with queen to h2 here. You may see the, it's this evaluation here fluctuating. Generally speaking, I think the engine is uh, needing a bit of time to catch up. Like, look, if you just leave it here, yeah, it just catches up there. But there we go. h5 here would have been a bit more resilient, but that looks horrible. I mean, first of all, there's en passant, which maybe not is not even a good move, actually. It takes en passant. Bishop e5. Interesting. And I can't play f4. Okay, I mean, that's pretty funny, but it's very, very hard to play h5 there. Um, I could play f4 anyway. But after queen h2, I believe I did say f4 is the best computer move there. I think I did say that I should have played f4 in the game. But queen to h2, the rook takes here, takes, drive the king to the f-file. Rook h6 is crazy. Just going after g6. And if knight to here... Bishop c4, oh my god, yeah, look, king goes here, you can pick up the bishop, that's outrageous, I didn't find that move, but I instead played bishop c4, um, anyway, pinning the knight, and then trying to make the most of this file here, and obviously, if the move queen h8 had happened, then, wow, bishop to d4, that's interesting, oh, that's ruthless, takes, takes, and look at the pins, look at all the pins here, wow, Rook g8 defending, and then bishop to f6. Okay, this is uh, this is some crazy stuff. And probably playing like e5 and trying to get in here. That's nuts. Anyway, my opponent did not go for that. Hopefully, we would have had an interesting game if they had have. Um, it was a b5. Sacrifice the bishop because taking that rook on the f file is so much more important. The king moves across. Knight d5 check. Force the king back. And you know when you have mate in one uh, by taking on g6, look for better. Play uh, check first, bishop moves, and then mate, because mate in two, two is bigger than one. Therefore, mate in two is better than mate in one. I wouldn't take that advice. Anyway, a very attacking game. I mean, just look at the king side. It just got decimated by my pieces here, by the fact we could push these pawns, and the fact that this knight wasted a bunch of moves dancing around. So did the bishop. You know, this rook never got into the game. The queen just never even moved. Um, this bishop barely got into the game, and the king was just hunted down efficiently. Uh, by all my pieces here so very instructive and i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something um thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one subscribe i'm waiting here for five seconds until you subscribe i can't be bothered goodbye